guys. We're doing uh, chapter 8, section 2 today. <clears throat> Yesterday we did, uh, we started the chapter on transformations, and we did our first transformation, which was a translation. Today we are doing our second one, which is a reflection. Uh, so here we go. A reflection is a transformation. Not only is it a transformation, it is also a rigid motion, which means it keeps all the side, the side lengths and the angle measures equal to each other. And it maps a point across a line of reflection such that it has the following properties. So over here I have an example, and you can see that I've called the line of reflection line M, and there are two properties that a point has when it gets mapped across a line of reflection. The first is, if the point is on the line, then the image of the point is the same point as the pre-image. So you can see here, I have point A, and point A and A prime the pre-image and the image are the same point because it's on the line of reflection. The second property is uh, a point B. The second property is what happens to a point that is not on the line of reflection. So here I have point B and its reflection, B prime, and the property is that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of segment B, B prime. So if I connected B and B prime and made it a segment, the line of reflection would be perpendicular to it, so you can see we've got this little box here which shows perpendicular, and it would bisect it, which means that this length over here is equal to this length over here, uh, making the green line the perpendicular bisector of the pre-image point and the image point. And the last thing you're going to want is uh, the notation that you use when you write a reflection. For reflections, we use a capital R, which stands for reflection. We have a little subscript down here, and that subscript is the line of reflection. Right? When we did a translation, that little subscript was a vector. Now the subscript is the line of translation. And then in parentheses, we have the pre-image. All right, our objective here is we want to be able to use the rule and we want to be able to write the rule. So we're gonna practice each of those a couple times. First up, we have given a rule, perform the reflection. Now, the thing that most students uh, mess up if they, if they get confused is, where is the line of reflection? Um, remember that when you have x equals something, you have a vertical line. And when you have y equals something, you have a horizontal line. Also, I want to note that often we will use the x-axis or the y-axis as a line of reflection, and the x-axis is sometimes not called the x-axis. Sometimes it is called the line y equals zero, which is a horizontal line at zero. And sometimes the y-axis is called x equals zero which is a vertical line at zero. So you should know that these are two different names for the same line. 
And last up, we have the line x equals y. That is another fairly common line that gets used, and I will get to that one in a minute. All right, so all we're going to do is draw the line of reflection, and then we're going to count how far it is from the pre-image to the line, and we'll count the same number of spaces on the other side. So first up, I have this reflection of triangle FGH. My line of reflection is x equals 2. Let me go ahead and draw that. That would be this line right here. So I'm going to start with point F, and it is 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. So 1, 2, 3, 4 spots, and F prime would be there. And then I would go to H. Now, H is actually on the line of reflection. So H prime is going to be the same point. And I come down to point G, and it is one, two, three spots from the line. So one, two, three spots to the other side. And if I take my points and reconnect them, Again, I like to shade in the image. There is my uh, image of triangle FGH. Let's look at example B. Example B has this line X equals Y, or sometimes that's written Y equals X. That is a line that has a slope of 1, because there is a 1 in front of the X, and it has a y-intercept of 0. So if you think about it like that, the y-intercept is 0, the slope is 1, which is up 1, right 1. It is this line right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw that line a little neater. Okay. Um, so I want to reflect this triangle across it. When I reflect across this diagonal line, I need to go perpendicular to it, which means I need to count diagonally across the boxes. So when I take a point like point F, oops, and I want to count diagonally across the boxes, this would be one diagonal here, two diagonals there. And then I can go ahead and count two diagonals to the other side, and I would end up right here. Let's go ahead and do H. So H has one diagonal, two diagonal, three diagonal. Let's count three to the other side. One, two, three would put me right here. And G might be a little more interesting because it has a half box. So one, two, three, four. And then at the end, it's kind of four and a half. So I would go four and a half to the other side. Right here would be a half, and then four more. One, two, three, four. And my H kind of got in the way there. That would be G prime. And so my triangle is going to look like that. And I will go ahead and shade it in. And I have now reflected the triangle across the line y equals x. Uh, we're just going to do a few points to practice a few lines. This will go very quickly. Um, I think you have a section like this on your homework. So what I'm asking you to do is find the coordinates of the pre-image and then reflect it and find the coordinates of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the coordinates of the pre-image for each point. Uh, the first one is negative 1, negative 3. Point V is 1. Ooh, that's interesting. So, you know, this number right here is wrong. I think that should be a 1. I think the graph is numbered wrong. Point V should be the point 1, 1. Point P should be the point negative 1, 2. 
And point Q should be the point 3, negative 2. Okay, I'm going to point out some properties of reflections, hopefully, as I go here. So I start with point U, and it is reflecting across the line X equals negative 3. So that would be this line right here. And when I reflect U across that, I need to go two spots, which kind of takes me off the graph. I believe that would be the point negative 5, negative 3. When I do the next one, I find this one more interesting. I'm reflecting across the x-axis. So that is this line right here. And I am reflecting point V. So it would end up here. And what I'd like you to notice is what happens to the coordinates. The coordinates of V prime would be 1, negative 1. And the thing to notice there is the y-coordinate just switched signs. Notice that when you reflect across the x-axis, the x-coordinate is not going to change because you're just going straight up and down. So when you reflect across the x-axis, the x-coordinate doesn't change. The y-coordinate switches sign and that's all that really happens. Let's go to the next one, which is the point P, also across the x-axis. So it would end up here. And again, the x-coordinate is not going to change. And the y-coordinate is going to change signs. And here comes the most interesting one. The line x equals y. When you reflect across the line x equals y, watch what happens to the coordinates. I am reflecting the point Q. So it would go 1, 2, 2 and a half, half, 1 and a half, 2 and a half, and it would end up here. And the coordinates of point Q prime are negative 2, positive 3. Look at what happened to the X and Y. See how the Y became the X and the X became the Y? When you reflect across the line Y equals X, all that happens is the coordinates switch places every time. And that is what happened here. The coordinates uh, for the pre-image and the image switched places. All right, let's look at writing a rule for a reflection. Last thing here. Uh, when I write a rule for a reflection, I got to tell you, most people can just see the line of reflection on a coordinate plane. Um, I'm going to tell you how to get it even if you can't see it, but probably you'll just be able to see it. So to write a rule, the first thing you want to do is connect each or at least two of the pre-images and their image. So down here I'm going to connect A and A prime, and you can see I've already done that with a dashed line. And I'm also going to connect C and C prime, and I've already done that. Next up, um, find the midpoint of each of these segments. So for A, A prime, it is from, from point A to point A prime, it is two units. So the midpoint would be one unit. And from C, to C prime, it is one, two, three, four units. So the midpoint would be two units. And I have put a blue dot at each of the midpoints. And then step three, I go ahead and connect the midpoints. And that might look like this, my green line. And that green line is the line of reflection. 
So step four, I can go ahead and write the equation for the line of reflection. Now, what's my line of reflection for this example? Of course, it's the y-axis. And what is another name for the y-axis that's very often used? That's right, x equals zero. Either one of those is acceptable. And last up then, I can go ahead and use the correct notation to write the rule. So I'm going to have a capital R. My subscript is going to be my line of reflection. So x equals zero. And then I'm going to put the figure in parentheses. So this would be triangle ABC. You try example B and I'll go ahead and do it as well. So my line of reflection is going to be this line right here. Maybe I figured that out by connecting some points and, and using their midpoints. Uh, my line of reflection is the line x equals 1. So my rule is simply reflection over the line x equals 1 of PQRS. And we're done with that. It does say down here to use arrow notation to show how each vertex maps to its image. So that's just asking you to say that A maps on to A prime, B maps on to B prime, and C maps on to C prime. Now I don't think we need to do that again. This is a nice example here of arrow notation. All right, last up is we may do some reflections in free space instead of on a coordinate grid, but we are not going to do that today in this section, so we'll save that for another day. Uh, good luck on your homework.